moment. This is all down to you now. This is Andrea. Andrea, uh, put your hands together for Andrea. Honestly, this is the hardest working girl at the motor show. Andrea has a microphone in her hand and you have got the floor. So if you've got a question for a panel of experts or for all of us, please just fire away and ask away. If uh, Jimmy's got something to say about the first question. Everyone always a bit shy, so just to ease it off, you'll get my discovery gift if you are the first person to ask a question. It is luxurious, people, so ask that question, get a gift. Tell uh, them what's I got in a it, question. Jimmy, tell them what's in it. I got a question. Y yeah. No, you, you've had one. No, I want the gift. <laughs> Listen, this has got in it, and as Hell's... What is that, that towel like, Hell's? Oh my God, it's, it's literally the softest towel The, the softest towel in the world. And it's huge. Then it's a big towel. Shark Week bottle, and then an Olympic bottle. I just can't understand why nobody's not putting their hands yeah. up. Put a hand up. There we go. There we go. He was first. No, oh, I, you got beaten I to think, it. I think in the back. Over there? Are we over there? This young lad here. And, uh, he was, Make sure it's this where the gift's going. Come and get your prize. Do we uh, wait? Come and come and get it. Actually, yeah, yeah, it, might, prize. it might be a rubbish question. Hang on a minute. What's the yeah, question? We need to hear the question first. Let's hear that question. It might be where's that China, in which case, no. Awkward. What's your favourite project you worked on? Ah, oh, great question. Oh, give him well, a prize. Well, that's a prize. Well done, mate. Great question. Uh, right, here we go then. Yeah, Mr. Exactly. Paul Calland, what is the favourite project you've ever worked on? That's a really good question because it's so hard to decide that really. But I think recently we've just done a really long restoration. So we're in a quite fortunate position with the way that we've done Salvage Hunters Classic Cars and we've been able to do a three-year run. So it means we've been able to take on some restoration projects that have needed more work than a TV car would normally allow. And we've done a gentle interceptor, which is probably the worst car I've ever bought, but turned out to be one of the original factory press cars. So we found all the original history, the, the bills of it going through the factory, all the photos of it in the factory, and it's taken three years to put it back together. And we've had to replace almost the entire car. But it's been such a lovely process of seeing it come together and finding the backstory. And it's so nice to see a car that was almost just bits of rust is now a complete, a beautiful car. Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. Uh, let's move on to the Goblin Garage crew. Uh, they're gonna give you a collective answer, and so will we. I don't think we'll, will we agree on one collective Anthony, I'm stealing this microphone off you because Helen's gonna say it. We're just gonna give it to her. Helen, yeah. over to you. Okay, do you know what? I'm gonna make an executive decision and say um, the Capri with the V8 Clio. Oh, oh, I, I agree, I, I agree, I agree. Good call. We all loved it, so Capri. yeah, it's our favorite. Five litre. Did you watch that one? Capri, the 5 litre Capri, they put the Mustang engine in, the Coyote engine. Oosh. did. Oosh. I mean, that car was insane. Brilliant work by the team, so uh, yeah, it's a very good one. I gather me and Ant are going to say the same thing, but me and Elvis are going to say the same thing. We agree, don't Right, we? so me and you, we're going free. Uh, our favourite restoration is one, two, three. Colin, Colin the Camper. I knew you was going to say that. Colin the Camper and yeah. 1963 Bedford Dormobile. That's come a long way from where it started. And then I gather me and Ant are going to say the same thing. Oh, I'm not sure we are. I think we are. Um, one, two, three. Cosworth. Oh, we're talking TV cars. Yes. Oh, well, yes. TV cars. Yeah, Cosworth. It's the Cosworth, the free wing Cosy. What are you That's talking the, about? Well, you know, the question was favourite build. Um, uh, no, well, you know, it's got to be Radford. It's got. A, yeah, well, of course. All right. Jesus. Let's go get a plug in. Yeah. Have you got always a selling? Of always right? selling. Always selling. Can we Jimmy, when's of... your celebrity range of toilet roll covers coming out? Uh, hats coming out? Yes. There it is. There's a Redford. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look, there this car here. Is. Let me just give you a little insight into this before he takes over. I sat in an office with Ant in America, and Ant started to just come up with this idea that he was going to create a car brand, an iconic car brand, and there were some light sketches on bits of paper and lots of talking. Uh, and then within a flash, Ant uh, literally comes up with this. This is uh, the latest creation. It's the Radford 62 Type 2. Uh, we all get one uh, because we're his friends. <laughs> so we all get one of these. But and you can fill in the gap. This is, um, this is your greatest project, isn't it? Yeah, so to answer your question, of all the cars I've built, this is the favourite car for me. Um, I launched a, a car brand with Jensen Button and Mark Stubbs, a car designer called Radford. Uh, and I partnered with Lotus to build the last ever petrol-powered Lotus. This is it. We're building 62 of these, that's an all carbon car. Even the wheels are carbon, uh, and I'm really proud of it. So uh, go online, Google Radford Lotus, and you Put can learn deposit down. Yeah, they're cheap, right? What's the next question? By the way, it doesn't have to be a car-related question. Feel free it to could ask. Be, it could be anything. It could be any question you like. You What's might... it like living with double Oscar winner Renny Zellweger? Yeah, is your nan upset that you've nicked her toilet roll cover? 
<laughs> questions like that? Listen, they yeah, just think car will get you nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else got a question no, by the back? Right there, Young right. lady at the back. We've got Andrea on her way to you. Gosh, she looks really annoyed as well, isn't she? What, well, Andrea? Yeah, Andrea. 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 Andrea is well, everyone, we're going to do questions as far away as possible. <laughs> so someone's got to go to the front over here next time. So Andrea's got to come all the way over here. No, not you. She hasn't got her 10,000 steps here in. Here we go. Shh, shh. Hi. Um, I'd like to ask two things. One, where do your wives go with you? Or do they stay at home when you're like in America? Yeah. Can I have a picture with Anton Elvis later on? Oh, <laughs> of course you can. We make sure that happens. Uh, right, well, my room number is... Uh, it... <laughs> um, yeah, when me and Ant were in America, uh, my wife Michelle lived with me. Obviously, she's my wife, so she travelled with me and lived with me. And uh, fortunately, uh, Michelle come to work with me every single day. She was very Say much... unfortunately. Fortunately, oh, I said. Oh, God. Uh, she came she's... to work with me every single day. She's part of the Wheeler Dealer team. She, she's a baker, so she makes trays and trays of uh, cakes and, and uh, she brings them to work every day. Uh, we travelled around America together. We had a fantastic time. Uh, and it was really exciting to do that and share it with my wife. So yeah, good question. Uh, my uh, my partner is a you, my partner is a, a well-known actress. So she lives this kind of weird life where she's on set a lot. Uh, right now she's doing a movie in New Orleans. Um, so uh, we have a, an agreement where we don't spend more than 14 days apart. So I've been I've been to New Orleans three or four times in the last few months, and she's come back three or four times. When she's not doing movies, uh, yeah, we spend loads of time together. And I have dragged her to a couple of car shows. I took her to the Radford launch at um, uh, Monterey on the Quail Lawn at Pebble Beach. And she's a good car person, so I'm lucky. Uh, I actually met my wife when I was working in Formula One. She was working in Formula One as well, so we have a car connection. So she's not a massive car fan, but she does like them. And she would have come this weekend, but she's uh, Leave her. Looking, after, <laughs> looking after my hundreds of kids. Uh, and as for your picture, uh, yeah, absolutely. As soon as we finished on stage, uh, Anton Elvis, uh, come and find you and they'll have that picture taken with you. No worries at all. Uh, who else has got a question for us out there? This young man right down the front. We're in a wheeler dealer cap, so we like this. It's good. What is your dream car? Oh, that's such a good question. Well, okay, get the Radford picture ready. Yeah. Okay, so Paul <laughs> yeah. Cowland. Paul Callum, what's yours? It does change every day, uh, to be fair, but today, this week, at this moment, I would say a Jaguar XJ220. It's a car I've always wanted since I was a kid. Nice. Uh, they're a very flawed car. I like cars that are flawed and have something wrong with them, and particularly I like cars that weren't commercially successful, and that car kind of ticks all the boxes, bit of a post car, and very cool. It's also the only car in the world that Paul doesn't own at the moment, yeah. so... Yeah. It's actually, it, it's, a, it's an interesting story, though, because Jaguar set out to build the car with a V12, right? They designed the car but couldn't fit the V12 in. So they took deposits based on a V12, took people's money, then shoved a V6 in it and thought, that'll be right. And a lot of people were annoyed. <laughs> they lost a lot of money on that. Uh, yeah, cool. Helen? Mine is uh, the BMW M1 Pro car. Nice. I'm a big pop art fan. And yep. Andy Warhol did um, one of the BMW art cars back in the day and it was a BMW 1 Pro car. So that particular one is my favorite but um, I'll take any of them. Yeah, nice car, great car. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say uh, an original GT40. Yeah, um, I don't, know. Oh, I don't think I'll ever be able to, <laughs> never be able to afford one, but you know, I can steal one maybe one day. Uh, yeah, they are amazing. An original GT40 is uh, 40 inches high, that's why it's called a GT40, an amazing car. Well, so is Ant. <laughs> yeah, uh, good choice, <laughs> yeah, good choice. Yeah. Jimmy, I agree with Ant um, on the GT40, except for um, Ant, what you said yesterday is a car, are you still doing the same one you did yesterday? Uh, no, I changed my mind because I slept on it. All right, well, I, well, I slept on it, it and I, yeah, so um, I'm a bit of a Land Rover geek and I've got most series of Land Rovers, but the one I've never owned is a Series 1 um, and an early one, so I'd love an early Series 1. Nice choice, yeah. great car. We just done one in 1955 Series 1, it was, uh, we fell in love with that too. Uh, my dream car is right there. It's Frankie. It's a 1964 Mini Cooper S. Uh, thank you. I absolutely love that car. Um, I, it was a dream of mine to own a proper one. And uh, I managed to find it in a farmer's field. Uh, we bought it and it's been beautifully restored by Andy Harrison and British Motor Heritage supplied a new shell. So I've got a brand new 2021 1964 Mini Cooper S. So I've beyond my dream car. I love it. 
Yeah, good shout. Uh, for me, it's uh, a 964 Porsche. I've always been a big fan of the early Porsches. I could never afford one as a kid, but still was dreamt of one, so got a Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 964, that's what I'm aiming for in life. Well, with the Jimmy taking the Series 1 Land Rover, I'm going to go for a car that I know Mike really, really loves. It's a Bentley Blower. Oh. Why didn't I say that? Tissues, aisle three. Oh, uh, epic, epic car for history as well. Next question. Yes. Got the, there you go, the gentleman over there. Oh, there's two. Yeah. What's your favourite car you've ever driven? Oh, that's another good one. That's a very good question. Uh, Paul Callum, favourite car driven? You're going to say a Matra, or you're going to say a Renault Espace? That is such a big question, because the favourite car you've ever driven? driven. Yeah, yeah that's sometimes big it's literally question. just the last car I was in, or the one that's nearest the front that's taxed with petrol in, to be fair. But your favourite car I've ever driven? Do you know what I drove the other day, actually? We did a 280Z, Datsun 280Z, uh, with triple Webers on it. And that car was amazing because, in terms of a visceral drive, in terms of a car that gives you a thriller, 55, 60 mile an hour that makes you feel like you're doing 150, 160 miles an hour. I think it's that I'm getting a real love now for cars that are just great fun at any speed. So I think that's probably, I think, in the last six months, the car that I've had the most enjoyment from. Lovely. Helen? I'd have to say um, the Goblin 944 Turbo Porsche that we did yep. because that's the first time I'd ever driven a Porsche and I got to drive the standard one and then I got to drive the one that we created for the track and it was so much fun I really didn't want to get out of the car. Fantastic. And? Um, I'm going to say uh, McLaren P1. Nice. Yeah. Um, absolutely fantastic. Crazy uh, car. Hyper insane car. Insane car. Um, my, uh, it was my friend's car and he told me to literally drive it as fast as you can and try to flip the car, like try to change lanes like you were going to try to flip roll the car yeah. and, and then and it just did it, like it was on rails, it just went from this lane to that lane, yep. like, uh, I was just un, uh, just unbelievable. blown away by it. Yeah, unbelievable. Jimmy. So it used to be an XJ220, but then over lockdown, I restored uh, a Ferguson tractor, and I tell you what, a vehicle <laughs> very similar. But yeah, very similar. <laughs> but as vehicles that have just given me pure joy, <laughs> that thing is sat in a hedge for 31 years, Mike. And this goes to show you, it's not speed everything. Oh, honestly, driving that, it shouldn't have ever driven again. It's given the most pleasure of anything I've ever driven. They both have similar Shoot me down. <laughs> so yeah, and, and that was you know 10 miles an hour, which is also the fastest I've ever. Driven. So that was amazing. Uh, but I, I, I fortunate because being a motoring journalist I've got to drive uh, P1s, I've got to drive the McLaren Senna, uh, I've, got, I've got to drive some real amazing hypercars but the one experience that I could never live again, it was an incredible experience, is I did 27 laps at Magny Corps, that's the Grand Prix circuit in France, in Michael Schumacher's uh, championship winning Benetton car and uh, that was an experience that I'll never forget. And it was all about brakes. It, the whole experience was not about power. You know, you get in a car, you can go fast. It's how you stop that's important. And uh, when you're doing 200 miles an hour in a Formula One car, and you can stop from here to where Andrea's standing, it absolutely is life-changing. It changes your life. So uh, that was an amazing experience. How is it I've worked in one for Sorry to interrupt. I think have just started the car behind us. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. How is it I've worked in F1 for a decade and I've never driven an F1 car, but you have. Uh, that doesn't seem right. Um, I've been lucky enough to drive the P1 as well, and, and I was going to say that was one of the most amazing driving experiences, but actually the one I'm going to go for is a Caterham 7, which is the opposite end of the scale in terms of price, but the driving experience behind the wheel of a 7 is unbelievable. It's the, the rawest driving experience, they're all so connected to the road, so I've been lucky enough to drive and race a few of them, and they're amazing cars. Nice one. Um, I'm going to go for a Mark I Escort Mexico. Oh, yeah. There's something really cool about that car. It's absolutely sparse. Uh, the ergonomics are perfect. Pedals, gear stick, steering wheel, very minimal buttons. So when you drive it, it's like wearing a suit. That is, for me, that's the perfectly poised driver's car. Yeah, lovely. Great question. Thank you very much. Funny enough, I don't think we've been asked that. We always get asked favourite cars, but not the favourite car we've driven. Yeah. So uh, next question, please. Can I ask you all, have you all got clean driving licences? <laughs> and if not, have you been on a speed awareness course? I'm just going to go... Uh, <laughs> uh, Paul? 
Uh, amazingly, I have. Yeah, I've got a completely clean license at the moment. I have been on a speed awareness course, which is why I've got a clean license. But yeah, Drew yeah. if he was here, he's on nine points. Is he? Yeah, he bought a Mercedes GTS. <laughs> In fact, last time we were here, he was in it. Do you remember? Yeah. Drew P bought a Mercedes GTS, had a clean license, and two weeks after that, had nine points. <laughs> so he sold it very quickly. Uh, Helen? No, it's not quite clean. And yes, I have been on a speed awareness course as well. <laughs> and? Um, I, I could lie and say yes, and so I have. Do you a have a driving license? I, I do actually now have a driver's license. I, you are a dual citizen, um, so you so, probably got so I, I, eight I have, points in yeah, Spanish. I, have and a, I do have a Spanish license. So yeah. They can't really take any points off me here. I've been on three speed awareness courses <laughs> in the space of nine months, which. You're not kind of. That's I didn't tell you could do that. <laughs> you can't. I don't think you can if you're British. <laughs> Uh, I did my first speed awareness course this year and then two months later got a letter from the police saying that camera was wrong and that was quashed and they gave me my money back. Oh wow. So, uh, you should spend some That's a win, right? And a new hat. There you go. So, I, I think it's clean, right? Uh, that's a new one. Um, yeah, I've, I've had some points before and they've all cleaned off, uh, but recently, uh, working with Elvis, I've got a Porsche Taycan and uh, rather, uh, I think, really crawly, uh, in Bicester, you leave a set of traffic lights, the Taycan can get to 60 miles an hour in two, two and a half seconds, but I left the lights, I was all on my own, it's four lanes, and I got nicked at doing 44 in a 40, which I think is a bit cruel. Um, and I, I have done a speed awareness course before, but somebody screenshotted it was online and somebody screenshotted it and then put it out there on social media that I was in the speed, which I thought was really naughty. So now I've elected to take the points. <laughs> uh, I've been a good boy. I've got a clean license. So nice one. I've had points in the past, but they're all gone. So at the moment, touch wood somewhere, we're clean. Um, I got nine points in one incident once. Oh. <laughs> what did you do? You can Google it. Um, uh, but right now I have uh, three. You can't, you can't leave it there. What I, have, I have three points and I have done a speed awareness course. Well, what, how did you get you nine get? in one incident? You went through three speed cameras. Andrew, next, uh, next question. <laughs> next question. Who else is here? Yes, sir. Right down here at the front. We've got, this will be our last question, unfortunately, folks. Um, we know what the pandemic's done, it seems to have bolstered classic car prices, but I wonder what your thoughts are on the most underrated affordable classic that's out there at the moment. Wow. Yeah. Huge. That's a, great, yeah, that's a massive you know, question. Do you know what? I'm, I'm a huge fan of the BMW Mini. I think the BMW Mini is doing really well at the moment. I think the current crop is actually struggling. It's quite bulky. The countryman's quite large. You see a lot of them about. But that, um, the, the, the kind of the first version and the second version, the if Frank you've ever driven one, the Frank one, e epic, epic car, and they're actually incredibly affordable. And the reason I know that is I, my daughter's, I bought one for my daughter for her birthday last year. So I went on this little mini adventure, and I found tons and tons of them available. Great car, didn't cost a lot of money either. Yeah, good. Let's go this way round. I don't know. I don't, I'm still thinking. You have to come back to me. That's a good question. You've stumped me. Um, I'll come back. Okay, so there are lots of choice at that bottom end of the market and it's finding that classic that you can have, I think, that's usable, that you can have fun with, that's going to be easy to maintain, easy to repair. It already has a club, so you've got somebody to lean on, so you, in the classic car world, you need to lean on people to keep your car on the road and for bang for buck, you can't beat it. It's the best British sports car ever made and it's made in Japan. It's called the Mazda MX-5. Great car. Yeah. Mazda fans. Yep. Um, Mike said a lot of sensible stuff there. My, my suggestion is something completely different. I was absolutely blown away buying that Green Goddess. That was a fully loaded fire engine with all the fittings, everything, and a working fire pump. I pretend to be a fireman for a day. <laughs> That's great. 3,000 pounds. 3,000 pounds, and I just, it blew me away. Um, they're rotting away in fields, and if we don't buy them, do something with them, they're going to be gone. Yeah. Because um, they, they, they. Not the most practical. Not practical. practical. No, no. Not easy to maintain. Part all of those park. things. Completely the opposite to Mike. Uh, but if we can take them and do something different, they're a beautiful part of our heritage and uh, absolutely stinking cheap. Yep. Yeah, very good. And um, I'm, I've just actually bought one, and uh, I, I think bang for buck right now, 
Um, well, six months ago, I think they were a lot cheaper. I think they've doubled in price now. They're still Since cheap. you bought one, a celebrity uh, uh, attachment. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, um, E46 BMW. Nice. 330 yep. Ci Sport. Yep. Um, it's a fantastic car. Drives great. Um, yeah, and it's just... Just great car. Does all the right things. Me and Rear wheel drive, manual. We did an E46 uh, M3 conversion. Uh, conversion, SMG. We deleted it and went back to the manual box. Just an great incredible car. car. Incredible. Car. Helen? I was going to say an MX5, but um, as you said that, I'm actually going to say a BMW Z3. Um, they're not quite as good as yep, the good MX5, choice. but at the minute they are still affordable. Um, a lot of the parts cross over um, with the E36 and you know they're not they're not very expensive at the minute i mean to be fair i bought mine with my heart and not my head he will vouch for that piece of junk but <laughs> i absolutely love it to bits i love driving it and it's not going to take a lot to give it some tlc put it back no it's not take a lot no it won't it's not okay not compared to my other cars who's going to be doing the work <laughs> anyway so a yeah, um, yeah don't have a domestic on the stage no, yeah, don't have a domestic um, on the stage guys but yeah that that's going to be on my instagram if you want to see what i do with it and uh mr cowlin this is going to be a belter i know this is going to be great. Do you know a car that I think is really still quite criminally cheap? They have gone up and that's the Rover P6 and I never really understand why. If you buy one with a smaller engine they don't seem to fetch a huge amount of money but they are an amazing car to drive, really technologically advanced, quite easy to work on because it's like a stress uh, skeleton with an unstressed body that you just bought on and off like a Citroen DS and you seem to just get a really nice one for just a few grand. So I'd definitely say that and then also the other car we should all watch out for is the Mark 1 Renault Espas and that in no way relates to the fact <laughs> that I have just bought one. Just, so yeah, that's the one to watch. The prices are those stratospheric. Uh, they, you what? Uh, I haven't done mine yet. Oh, haven't you? Come you done yours? No, I skipped me. Oh no, you, you forgot. Yeah, Do you that's know right. what I'm going to say? And this is a weird one, but I'd have never said it a year ago, but we did one on our show, which was the um, Fiat 20 valve turbo. And I'll tell you yep. why I'm saying it. It's cheap, and the performance you can get from those cars for that money is unbelievable. It's got a really strong engine, and there's lots not to like about that car, but the performance is not one of those things. So if you want performance for not a lot of money, it's not a bad shout. Yeah, that's a very, very good shout indeed. Uh, Annie, uh, we are at the end, but we'll take one question from you. Let's get um, Andrea. <laughs> there was a, the bottom jaw jutted then. What's the worst car you've ever driven? Mike knows what mine is. What's the worst one you've ever driven? Oh, Andy, that, that's a loaded question. Blimey, I've driven some. I buy crap, Annie, for a living. That's what I do, and get these guys to fix it up. Um, yeah, but anyway, let's start with Paul Cowan. We'll do this one quickly because we're way over. I once took a Mini in Park Exchange and I love Mini. It's very much classic kind of BMC shaped Mini and for whatever reason, just a car that had been really badly repaired, just drive horribly. There's a car you may have seen earlier, we did a Cortina GT that we bought from South Africa via a dealer in Scotland. That car had no rubbers, no suspension rubbers, no shock absorbers really to speak of and that car is probably the worst car I've ever driven. Helen? My car, the worst car I've ever driven, which I then drove into a boulder, was the Mark II Escort on Goblin because at the time it had a Mazda engine, uh, the gears kept coming out, it had no brakes and I couldn't see. So that was the worst car I'd driven. That was my f the favourite car I've ever seen you drive. <laughs> <laughs> Just remind everybody, Anne, how you cleaned the windscreen on that car. Um, I, I peed on it. Like, what else, what else would you do? We were stuck in a muddy quarry. We couldn't wash the windows. Jimmy wouldn't bring us any water. And weirdly, the, the production team. And weirdly, after that, Hells went out with you. Was yeah. that, it was then that Hells first yeah. saw Little Ants, wasn't it? Uh, in, yeah. if, and they on, fell in love. On the show, you see her hiding her eyes like that. Yeah. But yeah, she's peeking, all of a sudden, all she's of a sudden, peeking through the gap. All of a sudden, she's my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what car you've driven then? Oof. Um, I, you guys probably won't know what this is, but it's um, Ford in, in Canada, America, um, used to make. Uh, a car called a Ford Tempo. I don't know if you know it. The, the, the Ford Tempo? The Ford Tempo. Never heard of it. Exactly. <laughs> it, it's absolute heap of junk. I actually, actually, my dad had one and I nicked it to go get my beginner's license and I used to be able to start it with a pair of scissors. Yeah. Nice. But it was terrible to drive. Absolutely uh, terrible. Jimmy, uh, I bought a car, I, I, I purposely bought the worst car ever, uh, trying to get into Tilly and I was going to drive the worst car ever I could across the Sahara. To do that, I bought a uh, Robin Reliant um, because I thought, <laughs> what would be worse? And uh, luckily I got my first show before I had to do it because I'd probably be here now. 
<laughs> and still, I've still got the car as well. <laughs> Beautiful. It and also, I bought it after a fire, uh, engine fire. Let's go for you next. Uh, I bought a, uh, a Fiat Batone X19, which by the way I like. Uh, but I bought it from London for I think £75, towed it back. Like no electrics, no bushes, no brakes, no steering. Tons and tons of rot. It was the, but I got it running, but I drove it like that. It was a terrible, terrible car, and I liked the car. DeLorean. Oh, really? That's not awesome. You've just shattered, oh, shattered Helen Controversial. Street. Controversial. DeLorean. Terrible, terrible car. car. Only famous for one thing. Great Apologies story. to all the DeLorean owners. Terrible car. Yeah, it's famous uh, for being I, a terrible I, car. I, yeah, they are. The PBR engine isn't the best thing in the world, <laughs> is it? Uh, let's face it. Mine, um, oh, there's so many to choose from. I've got a litany of cars that I think are rubbish uh, out there. But I think it's possibly the car... And I'm sorry to say that Danny Hopkins is working on it. It'll be a, a Morris Marina Coupe. Uh, I, I can't ever remember having a good time. Sorry, say that a bit louder. Yes, I'm sorry. I had a Marina Coupe that the suspension collapsed on it when I was driving it. So I just left it on the street with the logbook MOT and keys on the passenger seat and walked away from it. Never see it again. So uh, there you go. That's the worst car, worst car I've ever driven. Uh, listen, guys, um, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We really do for engaging with us, watching our shows. We provide the entertainment that we hope you enjoy. Uh, Discovery is definitely the home of motoring. So make sure you tune into our shows on Discovery or on Quest. And we are glad to entertain you. Thank you for being so accommodating. Let's give a big, big clap and a cheer to Mr. Paul Cowan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Helen Stanley, Anne Partridge, and Jimmy DeVille. If you want to meet the goblins, you can meet them over on Jimmy's stand, which is by the big uh, uh, green goddess. Please go and see them. They'd be pleased to take a picture, sign an autograph. Um, let's put your hands together for Mr. Antansted, ladies and gentlemen. And for my wingman, Elvis, ladies and gentlemen. And ladies and gentlemen, your host, Mr. Mike Brewer.